Welcome to a new episode. So grateful you guys are here today. Today we're going to be talking about journaling. We're going to unpack how a journal can improve our well-being. Practicing gratitude can lead to a 23% reduction in stress hormones. The stress hormone called cortisol. This is a study done by Dr. Emmons. So you're telling me I can reduce my stress levels by a quarter by being grateful? Yeah, sign me up for that. That's the type of journey I want to be on. Journaling, in my opinion, is one of those things that costs zero dollars, can be done in the quickest amount of time, less than 15 minutes, can be one of the quickest habits to adapt, it can yield you the most powerful insights and increase your mental well-being. Let's check how deep this quote gets. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. That was a quote by Aristotle in the Stoic times. Stoics were known for keeping journals. In this video, we'll be covering why even bother journaling, the nine benefits of journaling, five journal styles that might work for you. I'll also discuss five different journal prompts that get you to dig deeper within and then I'm gonna reveal my secret journal, the journal that I've been working on for five years and I've tested and tried and tried all the different strategies out there and came up with one that works the best for me but may also work the best for you. I'm also gonna show you the ultimate guide to keeping a journal. This works great for clarity, goal setting, law of affirmations, manifesting, self-development, how to journal for self-growth. The list is endless of the possibilities what a journal can do for you. There's also a study in 2018 by Kaufman and Bear found that regular journaling can boost creativity and idea generation. So here are five common barriers that you might be thinking. These are things that I've come across in the last couple of years that were my pain points. So let's just go through those real quick. The most common one I get is, Chris, I don't have time to journal. If you don't have time to journal, then this is the biggest reason why you should journal. Journaling will clear up so much of your time because it'll bring you mental clarity. It'll show you what your priorities are. It'll allow you to crush those priorities. It'll allow you to go through your thoughts and process. And it'll free up so much mental time that will then lead to actual time in your day to day. Another one is I'm not a good writer. I'm not a good writer. I've never been a good writer. I'm still not a good writer. But the key is to understand that it does not matter. It is your journal, it is your personal thing. One thing that I thought about when I was telling myself this was, look at babies, right? Babies crawl for weeks and months. Next thing you know, they get up because they see everybody else walking around them and they want to walk, so they start to walk. Their first attempt, they fall, they crash. It does not go well. But do they continue to crawl for the rest of their lives? Do we see adults crawling on the streets? Well, I guess kind of do, but you get the point. At the beginning, it's tough. At the beginning, it's hard. Like everything else in life, it requires practice and that's how we grow and that's how we become better. So it's the same with writing. You write once, you write twice, three years pass and next thing you know, you are good at writing. You like writing, you understand what writing means to you. It could just be a little paragraph, it could be a long book, it doesn't matter, writing is writing. Another common misbelief is this won't make a difference in my life. Have you ever tried journaling before? Have you done it for a consistent amount of time, over 60 to 90 days? If so, and you haven't noticed any benefit, then absolutely journal might not be for you and that's totally fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you haven't done a consistent amount of time, then please do, give yourself a, a good 90 days. You deserve to do that. You wanna find, did it upgrade my life? Did it make me happier? Do I have more energy in my day? If you're able to answer yes to any of those ones, journaling is very, very, very highly worth it for you. But here's the irony. You need to journal to have self-assessment, right? So if you do it for 90 days, like anything in our life, any type of habit, going to the gym, trying a new diet, um, walking, reading, anything that you do in life needs a self-assessment, right? If you decide, hey, I'm gonna wake up every morning at five o'clock because I see that it works for others. I see that there's signs it could bring you more energy at the end of the day. So if that's the case, I'm gonna try it for myself. Let's say you do it for 30 days, but you don't have any self-assessment. How are you supposed to know if it's good for you and your body and your genes and the structure, your biology structure? That's why it's so important to have a self-assessment, but this is the irony. You need a journal to have self-assessment. You can't just think about it because after 90 days, you forget about the journey to the 90 days. 
So that's why journaling is so important for self-assessment. And this is where it opens up so many new and cool, innovative things for your, your biology. It's great. Another common question that journaling is just a fad and it's not for me. One quote that aligns with me regarding this is success leaves clues. Now the amount of happy, wealthy, successful people that journal in history is insane. You have the likes of Leonardo da Vinci, Albert Einstein, Charles Darwin, Mark Twain. It's so deep that in 1994, Bill Gates bought Leonardo da Vinci's journal, which was known as the Codex Lester. He bought it for $30.8 million in 1994. That's how powerful his journals can be. Yes, Leonardo da Vinci was a polymath and he was extraordinary in his journaling and his map drawing and just how he looked and synthesized issues and problems in the world. It's brilliant. It's brilliant what journaling can do. And the last common misbelief is, I don't know what to write about, I'll run out of ideas. Don't worry, for the first few years, this was my biggest stressor. And what it is, it's just a system. It's a system that is the problem. It's not you, it's not your mind, it's a system. And what I mean by system, it's a system that we develop to allow us to put ourselves in the routines or in the habits or in the type of journals we write and that kind of stuff, that's the system. And after you listen to this video, you would have developed or thought of your own system that works for you that motivates you to start journaling. So stay with me. The biggest tip I can give is stop looking outward and start looking inward. It won't be Netflix, it won't be YouTube, it won't be social media. That's not where you will find inspiration. It's deep down inside. It's in your soul, wherever the soul is. I think it's all over, but it's all inside. It's in your mind. You just need to listen. You need to remove all distractions, media, phone, family, friends, remove the distractions. Get into a state of blissfulness, get into a state of calmness. Listen to your soul, listen to your mind, listen to your spirit, whatever you wanna call it, just listen to it speak. We have it all in us. None of us are different. We all have the same type of structure. We all have the same type of human structure. We all have a spirit, we all have a mind, and we all have emotions. So we all have similar type of qualities when it comes to that type of stuff. Another stoic quote that really, really stuck with me is this one. The unexamined life is not worth living. Socrates. How deep is that? The unexamined life is not worth living. We need to examine our lives. We need to look at everything and that's how we grow and become better. And that is the key. Okay, so if you're struggling with clarity, dealing with mental stressors, exhausted, overworked, or simply just looking for answers, this video is about to hit some lights. Let's dig into the dangers of not journaling. So I only started journaling at 24 years old, which is about five years ago. So before journaling, I had a deep lack of self-awareness and personal development. In today's fast paced world, we often lose touch with like our feelings and our thoughts. The inability to connect with oneself is, is damaging on the stress levels and the anxiety and just any type of development. Connecting with a journal, it allowed me to get deep inside of it. It allowed me to get deep inside my thoughts. It allowed me to notice patterns. It allowed me to understand why and how and who and where and why these thoughts are coming. It even allowed me to get deeper in theories and, and philosophies and analogies and define my voice. The second thing that I noticed from the pre and the post journaling was I noticed a disconnect between myself and my soul. And like I mentioned earlier, with all the increased noise in the modern world, it's so hard to listen to what you want, right? So the disconnect with the self and the soul is very damaging because how can you live a life of purpose if you're not connected with what you actually deeply want? So I had to remove all distractions and I had to develop a routine and a habit that would allow me to make sure that I would journal every single day to allow myself to reconnect with me every single morning to allow me to have a nice day. And we'll talk about how I did that later. The third thing that I noticed was stagnation in personal development. I would keep reading all these books and I'd keep studying and grabbing information from there, grabbing information from there and just taking it all in and looking outward. But I wasn't writing anything down and I noticed that I wasn't, you know, I still wasn't happy, I still wasn't fulfilled, but I was reading all these books, but like nothing was sticking and I couldn't remember anything. And it was like, it was daunting. I was like, this, I guess this is not for me. 
And then when I picked up journaling and started to write all my thoughts and write everything, I was like, just my experiences. And, and like, it started to allow me to understand more and to understand books more and to understand things around me more. And it's like so powerful what journaling can do for you. Without structure in my mind, I felt lost in my life. I have a very analytical mind. So allowing me to journal, to draw, and to just put everything out on paper allowed me to gain that structure back. I was able to recognize patterns. I was able to overcome challenges and just continue to build personal development and allow me to achieve personal growth. At number three, we have stagnation and personal development. So without structure in my mind, I felt stuck in life. Considering I have an analytical mind, I really need a structure. And journal opened those doors for me. It allowed me to recognize patterns, overcome challenges, and just achieve personal development. It allowed me to build character. And the last one that I noticed that had a pretty big impact was the increase of stress and mental inflictions when I didn't have a journal. There's just so much mental clutter. I was dealing with a lot of mental inflictions, increased stress levels, which then increased mental clutter, which just led to a lot of physical health issues as well. Like I said earlier, journaling made a massive impact. So now let's dig into how we can adapt journaling into our lives today. So Rumi put it nicely. He says, the wound is the place where the light enters you. So powerful. Your life is like a book. And I wanna give this quick analogy because it's always stuck with me and yeah, it's a cool analogy. Every year is like a new chapter. You're writing your book. When you write your book, you are in the end, you are the writer and you are the reader. So you decide where this book is going. Every day is a new page. If one day is not going good for you and you're not happy and satisfied that day, that's fine. You turn over that page because tomorrow you wake up and it's a brand new page. So you can, you decide where this journey is going. You decide where this path is going. And then every year is a brand new chapter, right? It's a new, it's a new journey. It's a new challenge. It's a new obstacle. It's also new interests, new likes, new wants, new needs, right? So you're always evolving. You're always changing. And this book is always evolving, always changing. And that's why it's important to write your book, to take control. And by writing your book, in an essence, it's kind of like journaling, right? Because if you continue to live life without journaling, you're yes, you're writing your own book, not physically writing your book, but mentally you're writing your book, going through life. But what happens in five years, 10 years, if you wanna look back and to see the growth and to see what changed, to see like where was the biggest turning point? What was the biggest learning? What was the biggest growth? Like all those kind of stuff, like a journal is so powerful for those reasons. It also keeps you structured, it keeps you aligned, it keeps you on the path and the journey. If you have 10 year goals and so on, it allows you to notice that you're you're not steering off because if you notice you're steering off, you can come back. Another thing is you don't wanna let somebody else write your story. And I believe by not having a journal, you're then just free freeing it. You're just, you're going and you're following the path that maybe somebody else is writing for you. Maybe it's the system, maybe it's the government, maybe it's the school system, maybe it's whatever you are going through that is developing it for you. And that's why writing your own story is so powerful. All right, here are nine benefits that journaling can bring to your life. There's also a study by Cambridge University that shows that journaling can lower depression and lower anxiety. Crazy, crazy. So one of the biggest benefits, journaling can increase creativity. The ability to remove distractions, let your soul write is such a vibe. You'll notice when you start to write, your physical body takes a step back and your soul and your spirit, it takes a step forward and it just it just keeps going and it keeps writing. It's magical how cool this stuff is. And this increases creativity. At number two, journaling accelerates your ability to manifest your goals. There's just something powerful about writing your goals down. There's just a deep energy connection with that. What you put out, you shall receive. At number three, journaling generates clarity. Back on the voodoo stuff I love, when you put stuff on paper, you're taking it out of your mind and put it out in the world. Therefore, it creates more space in your mind to have more clarity, to have more opportunity for more thoughts and more analogies and more theories. So put it on paper, you're releasing that energy from your body and your mind. And number four, journaling heals the past and relationships. This one's very powerful. Journaling allows you not to be reactive. 
When you're in the habit of writing in your journal, instead of lashing out to a friend, a partner, a family member, you have your journal, which allows you to write and to go through your thoughts, to go through your emotions, and to go through how you feel. You're able to look at both parties' arguments. You're able to reflect and relax. This allows you to enter the conversation at a later time, educated, chilled, relaxed, and with minimal ego at the forefront. And number five, journaling ingrains your learning. What's the best way to learn? Teach it. What's the second best way to learn? write it down. If you're a strong journaler, you're able to ask yourself good questions. You might end up taking notes and teaching yourself. So powerful. And number six, journaling strengthens your sense of self. Being able to go deep within your thoughts, develop theories and philosophies, have your own thoughts, understand there's no right or wrong in life, it's only perception, is when you start to strengthen your sense of self. And number seven, journaling increases your gratitude. Gratitude makes you appreciate life. It makes you appreciate the people that are around you and just being able to breathe. It is the leader in happiness. It also allows the people around you to be happier. Start inward to have a change in your outward. There's a pretty cool quote um, about gratitude. Gratitude makes sense of our past. It brings peace for today and it creates a vision for tomorrow. Melody Beattie, so powerful. And number eight, journaling clears your emotions. I'm back on that voodoo train. Letting everything out on paper has an energy it releases everything from yourself. Let the bad and negative energy out. Just write it out because you're releasing it. And then breathe in the good, bring in the positive. Breathe in all the good stuff, all the good energy, all the positive energy. And number nine, journaling records your life's history. As we mentioned earlier, light, your life is a book. Imagine in your 90s, you can pull out 70 years worth of books and journals and all these things you wrote about. Wouldn't you? be curious to just relive those memories like in your 20s and 30s like just see what you had to deal with what you experienced and just appreciate where you are today i don't know man i think it'd be cool for me but here's a question that brought me a lot of pain but also brought me a lot of joy if you can grab your grandfather's or your grandmother's journals that they've had since they're 20 years old and they've been writing in them for whatever 10 20 30 years and you're able to go through them and find all these golden nuggets and find what they went through and what they experienced and what they learned in their their journey. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't you want to do that? I don't know. I think I would. I think I would. There's also 18 other <laughs> benefits to writing in a journal. So I'm gonna throw up a little thing on the screen that shows you those quick 18. Um, I really want to dig into the next step, which is action steps. If I go through all these, you're gonna drop from this video. I would not be able to concentrate for this long in a video. Those are the other 18. But now, let's dig into the beauty part of this video. So we're gonna dig into the types of journaling styles that might be you know, interesting to you that you might wanna try out. The key is to uncover your style of journaling. In a few minutes, I'm about to show you my secret style on what worked for me. But right now, let's talk about the five general ones. So the first one is a gratitude journal. Those are one of the most popular journals. Those are the ones that are spoken about a lot and they're absolutely freaking phenomenal. They're great journals. I always had a gratitude journal. I have a corporate gratitude part to my journal and this is where you can document and recognize positive parts in your life. Don't be vague, get deep with it. I'm grateful for the way my partner woke me up in the morning, didn't have to use an alarm clock. I'm grateful I was able to speak to my mom today on the phone for more than five minutes. I'm grateful that I'm healthy, that I'm able to drink a lot of water, that I'm able to have a nighttime routine. There was a study done in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships found that couples who practice gratitude journaling reported higher levels of relationship satisfaction. Interesting, very interesting. The second journal is called a dream journal. This is a super cool journal. Um, I had a dream journal. I'm probably gonna grab it again because this is probably one of the coolest experiences. I'll make a separate video for this. Having a dream journal allows you to connect with your dreams, right? Which is your subconscious mind. So you're connecting with your subconscious mind, your subconscious thoughts. You're digging deep into that aspect of things. But this is where it gets fun. The more you do dream journals, the more you remember your dreams. So you might remember your dream for a couple of seconds, but you wake up at right away and you write it down. And then a month passes and you have 30 dreams, but you've written them all down and you start to remember them more. And then you start tapping into lucid dreaming. And when you start tapping to lucid dreaming, you start to be able to control your dreams. And it's wild, but that's a whole other video. But basically dream journals, really cool, allows you to dig into your subconscious and really find patterns. The third one is a travel journal. 
I visited over 25 countries now and I did not do this till just last year. So I have three countries now that I visited that I have a journal about, but the other 22, I do not have a journal about. It breaks my heart because I wish I can go back and just see the people I've met, the experiences I felt, and not just see it in a picture, but actually see it in what, like, what were my emotions? What did I feel that morning that day? Was it a good day, a bad day? Like, it just, it makes me curious. And moving forward, now that I've started a YouTube channel, I'm going to be vlogging every single experience and journey that I go on. I'm about to buy a drone, it's gonna be sick. Another journal, the fourth one is an art journal. An art journal, people are very creative. Um, I've never had an art journal, but I've heard really good things about it. If you are someone who has a creative side, having a journal that you bring in all your thoughts and you bring in all the mood boards and you bring in the cool things that you see and the cool things that you like, like it creates this life for you. It creates this mood board vision for you. Again, I'm not that creative when it comes to like artistic stuff, but I have a deep respect for it. I love the Banksies and I love, I just love art. I really do like the storytelling in art is, is absolutely, it's absolutely sick. And the fifth one is a daily reflection journal. This is big for self analysis, recording thoughts, feelings, and just your day to day activities. You want to ask yourself key questions like, what did I learn today? Or how did I feel during that meeting? It just allows you to have a reflection of your day and to, you know, yeah, just better have better assessment of your day. There's two more journals that I, I want to just throw in real quick that are pretty powerful. Um, one of them is a goal oriented journal. So I have this and I just, every quarter I do this journal and it's when you assess your goals. It's designed to help set track and make sure you're on the right path. This type of journal, it mostly brings, you know, motivation and inspiration. Like I said earlier, um, I do it every quarter and I like to do a 10 year goal five-year goal, three-year goal, one-year goal, 12 months, and then every quarter. But when I do my quarterly goal journal, I look at it and I just see, has it changed? Cause totally your goals can change. Did my 10-year change, my five-year change, like what changed? Am I on the right path? That kind of stuff. So very powerful journal. There's a, do there's a study done by, what's his name? Dr. Gail Matthews. He found that individuals who wrote down their goals were 42% more likely to achieve them. That's like almost half, that's massive. That's like, yeah, it's a no brainer. And the last type of jur uh, journal that is actually part of my secret journal, which we'll talk about later, is therapy and healing journal, right? Which you put all your healing and all your journey, like your therapy, like it's in that journal. You become your own therapist, which is the most powerful thing because nobody understands your mind more than yourself. So cool, eh? It allows you to explore traumas and it allows you to explore deep emotions, but it just allows you to see trends on why you're feeling that, what triggers you to feel that. It just helps with any type of healing process. You might've heard this before, but the answers you receive is dependent on the questions you ask. That's why it's important to have good questions. And that's not just for anybody, that's for yourself, right? So if you don't ask good questions to others, what type of questions are you asking yourself? That leads me into the next, which is here are five key prompts that can really just bring you to the next level and to get deeper within yourself and to understand, okay, like, you know, that's a deep question. How can I answer that question? One of them is what three things am I grateful for today? The reason why three is because you can come up with one, maybe two, but with the third one, you're getting a little bit deeper and that's where it gets fun. This one gets me going all the time. If I can speak to my younger self, what would I ask him? <laughs> and when I say younger self, go like seven years old, 10 years old, like, your inner child type of stuff. Like this is where you do a meditation and you ask yourself, okay, if I was seven years old, what would I ask myself? And you close your eyes and you visualize that and you pretend and you imagine that that seven year old self is in front of you. Like <laughs> you're getting raw, like you're going deep because that seven year old self was your true self. That was you living the life you wanted. You didn't care, the complete freedom and just living your full artistic self. So cool to think about it. <laughs> Another deep one is how can I align my daily action with my life's purpose? This one's deep, pretty freaking deep. A big healing one is a good question would be, what emotions am I holding onto that needs to be released? That's, that can uncover some shit. And the last one is, and the last one is, how can I create more balance and fulfillment in my life? So this one's more of a, you know, how can you just be you? How can you be still? How can you do, like if you 
are not happy today? Why aren't you happy? What can I do to be happy? Just one of those kind of questions. All right, it's time. I'll be releasing my secret journal. So I do this in three sections. I developed this philosophy called the Heal, Build, Be. And it's developed in the last 12 months during my traveling experiences. And it was all developed through all the freaking journals. I think I had five journals in 12 months when I was traveling. I was just writing so much. And I developed the Heal, Build, Be. So I'm gonna give you a quick little rundown on what the Heal, Build, Be is. I'll make a later video strictly about Heal, Build, Be. But right now, I wanna stick to the journaling. I wanna stick to what my journal is. And it's around that philosophy. So the heal part of it is healing past traumas. It's a mindset upgrade and it's an identity shift. I believe this is the first pillar that is very important to be able to build the life that you want and to be the person you want. But it starts with healing and you need to heal the past so you aren't living in the past anymore to remove that identity that was shaped by something, somebody else and to build your own identity. That's the heal aspect of it. The next part is the build. And this is where You've done the healing. You're not done healing. You're never done healing. I'm still healing. I'm healing for the rest of my life. We, we heal forever. And that's bliss. That's cool. I'm all good with that. Right? So, but you started the journey. And now that you started the journey on the healing process, you can now move over to the build aspect. And now you're building the life that you want. It's either a business that you want. It's a career that you want. It's a financial goal that you want. Whatever the, the heck that looks like. But now you're building you. You're building the life that you want. Your friends. Whatever's in your surroundings. But you're building that life. And while you're building, you're building what aligns with you, your, li your lines with your, your soul, right? But if we don't do the healing, we've now kept our soul suppressed. We've kept everything suppressed. And then our ego is showing a lot because everything's suppressed. We haven't done the healing. And now we're building something that is not meant for us. We're building something that is off of our traumas, off of our childhood traumas, off of our generational family traumas. We're building things from our traumas that you know don't align with us. So. We have that midlife crisis, that quarter life crisis. We have that crisis at 40, 50, 60 years old that we see a lot of people around us having is because we've built a life that wasn't for us, it was for somebody else. And that's why healing first is important. But anyways, so you got the heal, you got the build. And once you're doing all that stuff and you're in motion and it takes, takes you know, it's a lifelong thing. But now you can start practicing the B part of it. And that's the, the top of the triangle. And that's the being present, practicing stillness and just finding balance in your life and just enjoying you, enjoying your experience, enjoying your journey, right? So the Hill Build B is a philosophy that I developed. I'm so stoked to uncover it more and to talk about it more, but I incorporate this in my journal. So my every morning is around the Hill Build B philosophy because you can incorporate this in anything in your life. It's so cool. I'm gonna put a picture up on the screen on what my journal looks like, but basically let's just talk about the B section. So the B section is first. So. I'm gonna pull it out and we'll, we're gonna do this together. It's gonna be a action, actionable thing. So the B section is, this is where you write down the three things that you're grateful for, right? So to be able to be is to be able to master stillness, to master present moment. And by being grateful for things, it's putting you in the now. It's putting you, okay, well, right now, this second, what am I grateful for? So I like to do three of them. You can do up to five at the beginning. The more, the better, but three is a nice number. So I go with three. What are the three things? So that's the top of the journal, three grateful things. Now, the next part is the heal part. So now how I see healing is by expressing your emotions, expressing how you feel, expressing who you think you are during that moment, during this time, and to just go through, okay, like what were some of my dreams? Maybe you want to talk about your dreams. Maybe you want to talk about how your morning is going. Maybe you want to talk about the day before, or maybe it's the end of the month. You want to talk about the whole month and how you're feeling. It doesn't matter what you want to talk about, just whatever comes to your mind. So I just start to write and I just keep going for however long I feel like going. Maybe it's five minutes, 10 minutes. Maybe it's two minutes. Maybe it's five seconds. Maybe sometimes I don't feel like writing anything. And I just write, Hey, cool. I'm happy talk to you tomorrow but it's just you're going through and you're going through and you're just analyzing and maybe you come with a philosophy an analogy a theory maybe it's something in your personal life in your professional life but you try to keep it personal and just how your emotions are feeling and that's the heal aspect of it so we've done the b we've done the heal now i like to go in the build aspect so for the build aspect this is where 
I try to be strictly professional. Okay, so this is more of a action. This is more of like, let's get things done. So this is where I do a massive brain dump. So I'll brain dump boom, 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 and just write down everything that's in my brain that I need to accomplish professionally. So right now I'm starting a new brand. Right now I'm starting a new YouTube channel. I want to write a book. Um, what else is going on professionally? Like I want to launch a podcast. There's so many things I want to do professionally. So I'll brain dump my, like what's on my mind. So usually it's day to day stuff. So I need to post this YouTube video. I need to write the newsletter. I need to write this article. Um, I need to write cold DMs for like, an, like I need to write the script for cold DMs, like that kind of stuff. So I'll write it all down. And then this is where the cool magic happens. The next part of that is I write priorities. And this is three priorities. So I'll write down priorities and I'll write three things. One, two, three. And out of that brain dump, I'll grab the three most important things that if I accomplish, it's a W for the day. A huge win. I'll be very, very happy. And if I accomplish it, before 12 o'clock noon, I'm dancing, I'm singing. It's a phenomenal day, phenomenal win, and it allows me to accomplish more tasks that need to be accomplished after 12. And my goal is to, everything I when I write down, when I brain dump it, things that I can do within a couple hours. So typically, I like to finish around the afternoon, and then I do other things in the evening. A rule of thumb is anything under 15 minutes. So for example, I actually wrote down, um, what did I write down? I said, set up hype furry so hype furry is a tool that i use for my tweets and it allows me to set up tweets for the next couple days so that will take me less than 10 minutes because all my tweets are already written so i have all my tweets just to put it into the platform so i should not write that down as a priority because if it takes less than 15 minutes you should do it right away so what i usually do if i write down my brain dump and i notice a couple of things that take five ten minutes i will do that right away and then i'll move on to my priorities because if it takes less than 15 minutes you shouldn't write it down you shouldn't time it because that takes too much mental energy and wastes your day. Anyways, I went on a rant there. So let's get back to it. That is my secret journal. I do the heal, build, be philosophy approach and I structure it like this. So you see it now on the screen and this is for me, that works for me. This is years and years. I started with a gratitude journal where I did 15 gratitudes every day. Then I did an affirmations where like, I am this, I am that. And then I moved over to strictly brain dump and priorities where it was like very professional. And then at one point I had two journals. I had a professional journal and a personal journal. And I was like, let's just morph this all together. Let's make sense of all this. And this is where I came to this. It took five years to, to refine. And I hope that this tool, this journal brings you value. I really do. I hope that this changes your life and brings you to the peace and the calmness and the clarity that has brought me. It's helped me find my voice. It's helped me find who I am. It's brought me here today. There's so many other tools that I've done, but journaling is a big, big one. So yeah, thank you for, uh, for listening. I hope this brought you value. Thank you so much for listening. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you next video. Ciao.